Good morning, good morning, good morning, uh, good afternoon, <clears throat> whatever time zone that you're in. Hello, greetings to all. I just want to come and give a, um, a quick word pertaining to the coronavirus, being quarantined, and everything that's going on in the world, that um, God is still forever faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful, and he's going to do exceedingly and abundantly in our life during this critical uh, time that we're facing triumphs and uh, circumstances and situations that we was not understand and we wasn't prepared for. So I got a couple of scriptures that I'm going to give, and then I'm going to go into a small little word, and I pray that it be blessings to you and others. You can share it. Somebody may need to hear it. Even if it's not for you, it can be for someone else. So I got a couple of scriptures that I'm going to give you, and uh, I'm, gonna be, I'm not going to be long before you long. I just want to um, encourage somebody on this beautiful day, April the 1st, 2020. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we woke up to see another day in the land of the living. Lord God, all that's going on in the world, thank you that you didn't forget about us. So as I begin to give a scripture and a, a word of encouragement, I want to open in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day, this day that was not promised to us, Father God. We do not take it for granted, Father God. Father God, we ask that you sweep through our nation, Father God, and begin to heal and deliver and set free, Father God. Not just from coronavirus, Father God, but from any sickness or any illness, Lord God. Any anxiety or depression, Lord God. Any stress, Lord God. Any trials or tribulations that anybody may be facing, Father God. Touch them right where they are and meet them in the middle of all that they're going through. Pick them up and turn them around and place their feet on, on solid ground. Lord, do a new thing in their life, Lord God. Break every yoke and break every chain. Begin to heal and deliver and set us free, Father God, because you said in your word, ask and it shall be given, Father God. So I ask for supernatural healing over coronavirus, Lord God. I ask for total healing over coronavirus. I ask for supernatural healing over coronavirus. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in this season, Lord God. I thank you that you graced us with your presence on this morning, that you didn't even have to wake us up. But Lord, you saw fit to wake us up and start us on another day and for that alone i magnify you i glorify you and i lift you up lord god as i prepare to give a word lord god let it be nurturing to someone's mind body and soul father god let it build them up lord god let it motivate them father god let it strengthen them during this critical time lord we thank you lord god for those twins called grace and mercy that surrounded us on today lord god if i had ten thousand tongues i couldn't thank you enough for what you're doing in season and out of season in my life in my family and friends life lord god so have your way at this divine time in jesus name i pray amen may god bless you may god keep you and um i'm just gonna give it to you like this um i know the coronavirus and being quarantined or self-distancing has caused um um a lot you know of um stress anxiety or you know got us out of our comfortability but i promise you the word of god will mold us and shape us and build us back up we're gonna come through this thing victorious so the first scripture i have is second Chronicles seven and four and um this is one of my favorite ones okay if my people which are called by name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then would I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. God is going to heal the land. He's going to forgive us for all of our sins. and He's going to heal the, learn, the, the land. That's the word. God's going to heal this land. And one of my other scriptures is John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Meaning whatever is going on right now, don't let your heart be troubled. And please do not be afraid. I know it's hard, but I promise you our faith is going to see us through this thing. None of this have caught God by surprise. He's going to make manifest everything in our life. We just have to keep standing. What are we standing on, Pastor? The word of God. What, what do you mean faith? Faith as small as a mustard seed. Faith without work is dead. Um, Isaiah 41 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous 
right hand meaning god's going to uphold us through all of this all we got to do is lean and depend on god he's going to uphold us didn't you hear what i said he's going to uphold us through all of this coronavirus don't have anything on the blood of jesus sickness and illness don't have anything on the blood of jesus i promise you when it's all said and done oh my 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 and the next scripture is philippians 4 6 and 7 do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and pensions which thanksgiving present your request to god present your request to god and and the peace of god which what is that which transcend i'm sorry i can't read my own writing which transcend all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in christ jesus it will guard your heart and your mind you know present your request to god all you have to do is pray and petition pray and petition let me say that again do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present present your prayer request to god and the peace of god you understand that so whatever your prayer request is to god present it to him you your prayer request should be you know what lord forgive me for my selfishness Forgive me for not having patience and trusting that you're going to turn this thing around because God can and God will. He's going to do more than we can think or ask. You may not can see it happening right now, but it's going to happen. You know, when you when, when a woman get pregnant and um she found out she's pregnant, she got to go through stages, right, before she can actually give birth, okay? So it's a process. So imagine right now that we're pregnant right now with the coronavirus. We're pregnant with being quarantined. We're pregnant with self-distancing or, you know, and things that that's uncomfortable that had us come out of our normal. Because if you've never been pregnant before and you finally become pregnant, it's like, ooh, I felt I first I felt that first kick or I gotta go through try try um trimestals. I'm in my first trimester, I'm in my second trimester, I'm in my third trimester. So right now we are in the tri first trimester, meaning we are in the first trimester of coronavirus. You understand? We're in the first trimester or being quarantined and social social distancing. I, I keep saying self, but social distancing. We are in the first trimester of all of that. So being in the first trimester of all of that is uncomfortable. It's new to you. So we have to come out of our comfortability. Just like when a woman becomes pregnant for the first time, she may have morning sickness. That's uncomfortable because it's new because she hadn't had morning sickness before. So she didn't know what was the steps of morning sickness or what it really was. She's like, oh my God, I'm having morning sickness this ain't right so before that woman found out she was pregnant she may have started having symptoms before she found out she was pregnant and she missed her cycle and, or whatever she had to, her body had to adjust to well that's what god is trying to get us to adjust to the change see change is never comfortable for people but change is necessary so the things that has had our attention you know, like before you was pregnant, you may have had that body that you was like, boom, bam. Now your body is stretching and going through phases that it hadn't went through yet because now you have become pregnant, you know, and you wasn't pregnant before, if that's making sense. I'm trying to make it plain. So right now with the coronavirus and we in the first trimester and, you know, we've been on quarantine and on uh, shutdown and we've been on, you know, social distancing and things have changed in the first trimester. And we like, well, wait a minute, this is too much. You've been quarantined for two weeks and you're like, oh my God, I can't do this. The nail shops and close, the beauty shops and close, the barber shops and close, restaurants, you can't even go and sit down and eat in them. You can order your food and go inside and pick it up. Or you can have um, Uber Eats or DoorDash or what, however delivered to you. These are things that you may not be used to. See, we got so comfortable with our our regular that now is it now it's irregular so if that makes sense we had got comfortable with things being regular that's just like um when you uh, have a child and you first the, ch the child learn how to crawl and learn how to walk there's phases in that so now we're in the crawling stage you know of coronavirus and we're losing our mind some people are losing their mind and god don't want us to lose faith he wants us to keep standing and keep having hope and keep having faith in the midst of all that and that god's going to do a shift and a shaking are we prepared for the shift and shaking? See, a lot of people say they have faith and they trust God and they lean in and they depend on God. But when things shift and things change, 
That's when your faith is being tested. Do you really trust God? Can you lose everything you have and still lean and depend on God? If you lost everything you have, can you lean and depend on God? If you on your sick bed and the doctors walk in and say, there's nothing else they can do. Are you able to say, I know who my physician is. I know who I serve by his stripes. I am healed. Do you know by his stripes, this nation is already healed. We have to walk in our healing. We can't get upset because things have changed. Things have to change to get our attention. And it's, you know what? We know what the corona coronavirus is actually doing is causing families to come together some people didn't even know what their children liked or disliked because you hadn't even had that opportunity to spend time with your children because you've been so comfortable with your regular now it's irregular and now people are having to homeschool learn some basics learn some of the stuff that the teachers have been dealing with with your sons or daughters uh you know uh understanding that you know we was able to always go in the grocery store and can get whatever we want now you go into the grocery store you can't even get toilet paper you can't get lysol you can't get hand sanitizer so those things that was easy access for us to go get now is causing a rough like oh my god i can't get sanitizer i can't get toilet tissue i can't get lysol the things that you were able to go get easily now that you can't go get those things have you woke up yet have you woke up and understand that those things can be out of your reach and out of your range but god is forever with us that god's gonna bring us through this thing you know it's, it's it's so sad that people are having to be told to wash your hands you know or you know use hand and sanitizer and do these things that these things should have already been doing and a lot of times people are flipping flipping out about the coronavirus but to be honest uh, many of us had the coronavirus and we thought it was the flu and we recovered you know so if god recovered you from the flu pneumonia cancer sickle cell diabetes lung disease kidney disease heart failure um anxiety depression stress bipolar all these things that we have all had to endure or perhaps someone you know endure a loved one having god's grace been sufficient enough to cover you in that i don't know about nobody else but i was i was diagnosed with breast cancer god healed me i was diagnosed with colon cancer god healed me i had five heart surgeries god healed me you know the doctors walked into my hospital room and said there's nothing else they can do for me but god healed me because i stood on god's word even though i heard what the doctor said but i still raised my hand and say i surrender all to you god you have the final say i your report is what i believe by his stripes i am healed i decree and declare healing on me so that is what i'm saying right now we got to decree and declare healing on the nation we got to decree and declare healing on coronavirus we got to decree and declare healing over the over our family over our loved ones over people that we don't even know we have to keep standing because the word of god will not return back void no matter how hard it looks no matter how uncomfortable it is for you right now this too shall pass we may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning i don't know about nobody else but my joy is right here and right now god is already doing it right here and right now because i've been in my secret place calling out to god not for myself but for all people all nations all men and women boys and girls babies elderly i have been calling out the name so i'm okay with uh, getting uncomfortable because anytime god's getting me uncomfortable he's about to do a manifestation in my life sometimes you know you you think your bank account is this and you get to paying all your bills and checking it off and you got everything and you know what you you thought you had it all figured out and then you go back and you be like oh I, I calculated this amount and then you go back and you obviously you may have miscalculated so now your account may be looking upside down maybe it's um you know it's in the negative or you have to use your overdraft and you had already put everything down because that's your routine of normal that you know okay I pay this I pay this I pay this I pay this and check 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 and you're checking off everything but somehow you had a glitch in there and you missed something Something. In the middle of missing something, it sets you back. You understand what I'm saying? It sets you back where you use your overdraft or now your account is in the negative. But we right now may be in the negative with trials and tribulations in the negative where we can't go to the barber shop. We can't go to the beauty shop. You can't go to the nail shop. You can't go to the church. But the church is on the inside of you. We are the church. The church is a building. The buildings may have closed, but the church have not closed when the church is on the inside of you. I can preach this thing, y'all. I'm trying to close, y'all. I said I wasn't going to be on here long and I wasn't trying to preach. I was just trying to give some light in somebody's darkest time i was just trying to encourage somebody in the midst of all that's going on god is still forever present he'll never leave us never forsake us and guess what 
this too shall pass. Guess what? God is still in control. And guess what? He's going to bring us through this thing at the right given time. If we get it done as quickly as we want it to get done, what have you learned? What have you learned being quarantined? What have you learned with uh, doors closing on businesses? What have you learned in that? Haven't you learned that God's doors never shut? Haven't you know that God line never closes on us? You can call him up any time and he's available to us. So what if all this have taken place to shut us down where well, we can have family engagements? You can have time with your family. A lot of people hadn't even been staying at home. They got spouses that they haven't even been, you know, core coming, coming close contact with or engaging with. So guess what the coronavirus and quarantine has done? It's caused you to have dinner time because you're preparing meals. You're having movie night. You're having game night. You're having conversations. You're making time. You're texting or calling loved ones to check on them. Things that people hadn't even been doing. So this is causing us to cause togetherness you understand businesses you know you can't go to the business and sit in a restaurant but you can still support the restaurant by calling in ordering food picking it up or having delivered you know so we have to come out of our normal okay that's the first trimester okay we ain't got to the second trimester the third trimester yet we just found out that we were pregnant and we in the first trimester with morning sickness okay that's about to pass okay that's about to pass we're going into april now so that's about to pass and then after that you're going to start feeling kicks. You know what I'm saying? So after you start feeling the kicks, there's God moving things around, you know, now that you can feel it, you know, because right now we can't feel the kicks exactly. We just know that we're pregnant with coronavirus. I'm, I hope I'm making it plain. And so when you start feeling the kicks with coronavirus, that's letting you know we're about to birth this thing up out of here. You understand? So by the time we get to the third trimester, we're going to give birth to coronavirus. I mean, we're going to deliver that thing. Hey, 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 glory to God. Once we get ready to deliver that thing, we can, we will no longer be able to repeat being pregnant with coronavirus. Somebody missed that message. It wasn't for you. It's for somebody else shared, but God's going to deliver us from coronavirus. So you got to go into the labor, you know, you got to, you know, and you get to one, you got to dilate to one, but by the time you get to 10 centimeters, you didn't push that thing out. It is gone. It's like birthing out cancer or, you know, sickness and illness. Once you, once you get the ring, that bell to say I don't have to have no more chemo or I'm cancer free you have birthed that thing out so you have to deliver it right in order to be free from it in order to be healed from something you got to go through a healing process and a deliverance process well right now we're just in the healing process but I promise you we're about to deliver this thing we're about to push this thing out we're about to give birth to this thing it's uncomfortable right now but I promise you when it's all said and done you'll be able to say thank you Lord for my uncomfortableness Lord thank you that things got turned upside down so I can be able to call on you. Now you having people who haven't live that churches are live on social media. Some folks ain't even thought about going to church in years, but now you own live watching church service. You getting a word. So, you know, God wanted us to come to him. You understand? He wanted us to be kingdom minded people. You understand? So now we have, we going on social media to watch live services when you wasn't even thinking about a service now god's got your attention right understand that understand now when you go in stores or whatever you're cautious of the people you engage with because you don't want to catch coronavirus hallelujah so that's what god is doing he's trying to show us that he is still in control and so even though the coronavirus have showed up it's not gonna stay it's gonna leave because I believe that it's going to be a deliverance happening. Like I said, we in the first trimester of this thing. You know, we just found out we having morning sickness. But I promise you, the, the second trimester, when you start feeling those kicks and stuff, that means it's starting to move. That means the coronavirus is going to start to move. I feel like preaching this thing. Somebody don't know where I'm going with this thing. I said we in the first trimester. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we just found out about coronavirus. And they're giving you steps and steps on what you're supposed to do with that thing. Wash your hands. Uh, sanitize things and use hand sanitizer and you go out come back in uh, wash your clothes and stuff you know be cautious and you know do social distancing keep your distance you know how god wants us to keep our distance from certain things and certain, certain stuff that we haven't kept our distance from we've been shacking up laying up opening it up sinning fornication lying stealing and god was like oh no 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 i put a stop to this thing so right now we all being watched 
because people are watching you when you go into the stores. When you see people, everybody, people got on their mask. Some people, you know, they doing their own thing. They don't believe how serious this thing is until it hit home or until it hit close to home. But I'll stop by to tell you, it's very serious. But in the midst of seriousness, you still have to lean and depend on God. In the midst of seriousness, you still have to know where your help come from. And that's what God wants us to do. Apply the word. So I don't know about nobody else, but I know <laughs> I'm almost about ready. I'm about to go on my second trimester. So I'm about to feel the kicks of coronavirus. That means it's moving out of the way, glory to God, that it shall not be able to touch me or my children or my grandchildren. It shall not be able to touch my family and friends, glory to God. And it won't touch my enemies either. So I know God's doing some things. And then when we hit that third trimester, glory to God. Oh my God, God, that's the breakthrough stage. When you hit the third trimester of coronavirus, you're about to deliver that thing. I'm about to give birth to that thing. So I'm getting prepared to go into the operating room because some of us got to have some C-sections and some of us going to have a normal push. And we go in there and we're about to give birth to this thing. So we're about to birth out coronavirus. I mean, we're about to be delivered from that thing. Are you ready to be delivered from it? Are you ready to be set free from it? Are you trusting God? Are you leaning and depending on God and knowing that God can do all things but fail us that God's word would not return back void are you applying the word of God while you in quarantine are you having prayer and meditation are you leaning and depending on God are you trusting that God's going to begin to break every yoke and break every chain and give us a new walk and a new talk and a sound mind that he's going to pick us up and turn us around and place our feet on holy ground I don't know about nobody else but I feel the atmosphere moving I feel the spirit of God moving I feel a shift taking place I'm so closer to my deliverance. I can feel it about to happen right now. I'm about to give birth to this coronavirus and it shall not be able to take up residence in my family or my friend's life. I don't know about nobody else, but I'm believing God for deliverance. I'm believing God for healing. I'm standing on the promises of God and it's yes and amen. And I know that God is no respectable person that if he's at my house healing and delivering, I believe that he's at your house as well. He's at all of our houses. You see how God and got our attention all over the the world, every city, every state, every country, every nation, it, the whole nation is like, whoa, whoa, like, whoa, how, how amazing is our God to wake us all up at the same time. Some of us been sleeping. Now it's time to wake up. And waking up means get up and praise God for another day that was not promised to you. Praise God for another day in the land of the living. Praise God for brand new mercies every day. Praise God that this too shall pass. Praise God that you believe in him to break yokes and chains. Praise God that you trust in him for healing and deliverance. Praise God in the midst of it all because God is faithful. He's going to see us through this thing. Glory to God. So I pray, I pray, I pray pray that this word has been uplifting. I pray that this word has helped somebody because it has helped me as God gave it to me. I give it to you and I pray that it feeds your hungry soul. I pray it leaves you with peace that surpass all understanding. I pray he be the lifter of your head. I pray that you wipe every tear and begin to rejoice in the midst of it all. Baby, I've been in a tsunami, a Katrina, and a flood all at the same time. But although I've been in old storms, hallelujah, I still know how to lean and depend on God. You wouldn't even know that I'm still in the storm. You understand what I'm saying? I'm still in the storm. But when you can praise God when you're going through, when you can stand in the gap for others while you're going through, that's when your breakthrough shows up. So I'm so glad that God sees fit to use me. When I don't feel like being used, you know, I'm like, Lord, I'm tired. Lord, I'm overwhelmed. Lord, I'm stressed. Lord, I'm drowning in my own tears. I can't even catch my breath. And every time I come up for air, I get pushed back on. But God told me he pushing me back under to show me that my lifeguard walks on water. He pushed me back under to show me that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. That when I looked on my right and I looked on my left and I looked in the front and I looked behind me, man was nowhere to be found. But I promise you, my father... <laughs> Oh, baby, he a father to the fatherless and mother to the motherless. He was right there on my left, on my right, in the front and behind me. And he was the lifter of my head. I had to go lay down in my prayer closet and I had to surrender all to God. Lord, this weight is too heavy. Lord, this burden is too heavy. I've been carrying this thing around for far too long, Lord God. And I tell you, I can't carry it much longer. I'm suffocating in pain. I'm suffocating in my tears, Lord God. I can't stand up straight. I feel weak, Lord God. I feel 
feel violated. I feel like I've been abused, Father God. But I need you to step in. He said, I never leave you. I never forsake him. Hold on, my child. Help is on the way. Hallelujah. He said, by his stripes, you are already healed. The blood of Jesus would never lose his power. Just like I healed you before, my child. I'm going to do the same thing again. Where is your faith in God? Are you leaning and depending on me? I got you covered. Hallelujah. I may not come when you want me to, but best believe I'm coming right on time because his timing is perfect. Lord, I trust you when I can't trace you. Lord, I need you right now. Help is on the way. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for helping me come out. Hallelujah. I shall come out victorious. Hallelujah. I'm ready to give birth. Okay. I feel a dilation in shoulder. I think I'm at one centimeters. I feel it in my heart. I feel it in my spirit. Hallelujah. I'm almost at two, y'all. Hallelujah. Ooh, we. I didn't skip past three. I'm at four. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Oh, I didn't hit six centimeters. That's time to start preparing to deliver this thing. Hallelujah. Oh, now I'm at seven. Hallelujah. Mean completion. Hallelujah. I'm almost there, y'all. Hallelujah. Now I'm at eight, y'all, which means new beginning. Oh, yes, it's my new beginning, y'all. It's a new season, y'all. Fresh anointed flowing my way. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm at nine centimeters. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now the doctors got to start putting on their gear so they can help me deliver this thing. They told me to lay back. (laughs) Put your legs up, woman of God. Hallelujah. You're right there. I see the head. (laughs) Glory to God. I see the head coming out. Hallelujah. Are you ready to deliver this thing? I said, yes, I am. Hallelujah. Oh, now it's preparing, y'all. They all getting strapped up. They all getting ready. Okay, now I'm ready to push this thing. Oh, there go the first push. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I feel a second push coming on. Hallelujah. Oh, by that third push, I didn't birth that thing. God, deliverance that have taken place right now. Oh, yes, I'm at 10. Boom. I done pushed it out. I pushed out Corona. <laughs> I pushed out sickness and illness. Hallelujah. I pushed out de- depression. I pushed out anxiety. Or oh, I pushed out stress. <laughs> I pushed out bipolar. Cancer has got to go. <laughs> Sugar diabetes have got to go. Lung disease have got to go. Hallelujah. Heart disease have got to go. Kidney failure has got to go. Hallelujah. Healer, healer, healer. By his stripes, you are healed. We shall come out victorious. May God bless you. May God keep you. I pray this word bless you hallelujah may god continue to bless you exceedingly and abundantly enjoy your day today is the first day of april Hmm. and god is going to do some things throughout this month healing and deliverance will take place are you ready to push and give birth to coronavirus birth that thing out so it don't be able to get you impregnated again you can't get impregnated with the same thing again (laughs) oh no 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 It, it won't come it won't come like that so give birth to that thing god bless you I love you. This is Pastor Yolanda Smith in Anchorage, Alaska. Have a wonderful, productive day. Please share, share, share. Somebody need to hear this word. Even if it was not for you, it's for somebody you know. Blessings. God bless you, my beautiful queens, my handsome kings, my men and women, boys and girls. God bless you. Take care. Peace.